Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and to today's video. You are currently joining me, as if you didn't already know from clicking on this video, uh, you are currently joining me inside our pool house. Now for those of you who perhaps are not regulars and maybe you don't follow us over on the home account over on Instagram as well, if you haven't seen a, a home tour, I'll leave some links down below in the description box for you guys to catch up on those if you haven't already seen them. But this is a separate building to the house. So this is a pool, it's a pool house or a pool room. Now we've got this area here which is for the indoor pool and then just behind you guys, which you'll see throughout this video, there is a brick wall and a door and that goes into another area which we are currently using as a gym. But again, that also needs a very big makeover. Now, this room has not been touched at all since we moved in. And if I can give you guys just a little bit of like backstory on the pool situation. Um, pools in the UK are not common uh, because we just don't have the climate. We don't have the all year round climate for them. There's probably a few months in the year where if you have an outdoor pool, you can actually use it comfortably without freezing. Indoor pools are even less common. Now, I know it might be a feature of a home that a lot of people would get very excited about, but there are some drawbacks. And this is one thing why we're not gonna spend a lot of money in here. We're just gonna give this a mini makeover because we don't know if we're actually gonna keep the pool yet. Uh, but we don't have any money for at least two or three years to do anything else in here. So for now, we're gonna just see how often and how frequently we can use the pool. Obviously, given the fact that it's an indoor pool, um, that serves us a little bit better in the fact that we could actually use this in winter, but the bills and the costs for actually running a pool are crazy, especially given the recent hike in energy prices. So the electricity is eaten up quite a lot at the moment. It's costing us about two pounds a day just to run the pump which pumps the water and sort of keeps the water moving so it doesn't go stagnant. And then there is the gas boiler, which there's a boiler just through that wall over there, which then heats the pool. We haven't turned that on. In fact, no, that's a lie. I think we turned it on after we got the pool cleaned, which was potentially October last year. So not immediately when we moved in, because we moved in at the end of September, but we, we managed to find a pool guy who actually had to travel an hour. That's another thing, because pools aren't very common in the UK. Finding pool specialists, they're not easy to find. They are very few and far between. And given the fact that there aren't many of them, that means obviously that they can be quite expensive. So. We managed to find this pool guy, he came, he cleaned the pool, he sorted out the filter a little bit and that was pretty much it. We bought some equipment, so we bought this cover which should hopefully when we eventually turn the boiler on and heat the pool, that should keep the heat in and also reduce some of the condensation in here as well because there aren't, not that I can see, there's one tiny little vent over there which is definitely not enough but we have this whole wall of windows over here so in the summer we can kind of leave some of these windows open just to ventilate it a little bit. So we're essentially just going to give this room a bit of a mini makeover. I'm going to clean up the tiles on the floor. Um, we've partnered up with Little Green which as a lot of you guys know is our favourite paint company ever. We used it all over the last house we have used it all over the work that we've done so far in this house and they are supplying us with the paint so i'm going to give the brickwork a little bit of a facelift and hopefully that will this room isn't particularly dark but hopefully that will really brighten it up and i think sometimes a lick of paint is just a good way to go for giving something a little bit of a change so today is actually the hottest day of the year so far so i thought I would waste the day away in here. I'm going to be on my hands and knees scrubbing the tiles, which I'm going to show you guys in a minute because they are looking very grubby.
Right, okay, so I have got myself some bits and bobs down here. What I'm gonna start off with is I've just filled this glass Tupperware thing with um, some washing up liquid and hot water. I've got some gloves and a scrubbing brush. And this is actually just what I used the other day. The other day I came in and just did a small test area, which is just here. So this is the little section which I did with the washing up liquid. And then if I sort of move further along, you can see where all the mildew starts to build up. So that's actually what this section looked like. Let's get to it here before I gave it a quick little clean the other day. And that was just so that I could see if uh, washing up liquid would do the trick. Now, obviously I haven't done the rest, which is gonna be today's task. So I'm gonna use a little scrubber brush. Got my rubber gloves. Um, I've got an anti back down there as well, which I might use sort of as a final thing. And then as a backup, I do have two bottles of bleach. Now we try not to use bleach. We certainly do not use it on a regular basis. We used some when we first moved in, just because some areas of the house were um, a little bit neglected. So we did use a little bit of bleach, but we try not to use it obviously, because it's quite harmful. Um, so that is literally just a reserve. So what I'm going to do is start off by scrubbing the bull nose and then probably the sort of corresponding tiles next to it. I've got a towel here. I think I'm going to go and need to get some more because whilst we've got a pool cover, I don't want to contaminate the pool water underneath. Um, so what I'm going to do is essentially lay a towel over there just in case I get any sort of splashes or in case any starts to sort of any of my solution runs down because I don't want to turn the pool into a giant bubble bath. So yes, that's my plan of action. I reckon this is going to take me a couple of hours to do the whole area and there's some areas. I'll show you this bit over here because this is going to be hopefully a really good before and after. This bit over here is really bad. So this section is going to be very satisfying to transform it back into the white bull nosing. And then there's this bit over here, which I think is rust from these towel rails, which were fitted onto the wall. And I don't even think how old they are, but I mean, if we zoom in, you can see they're very rusted. So I think perhaps this pool just wasn't used by the previous owners. I think they used it when they first moved in and they were only here for five years. So I think this is probably from the owners before them. Um, and again, it's just, it's just got a little bit neglected, which is fine. That's what I'm here for. Gonna give it a good old scrub and a bit of a facelift. Right, I have just finished the first clean of all the pool surround, the tiles and the ball nose coping, which is this trim here. Um, as I suspected, it will need another clean, but something that started happening, mainly over the other side, actually, I'll take you over there. Um, I have scrubbed this as much as I possibly can. This hasn't come off and of course I did just use the washing up liquid and hot water so perhaps this might need a bit of bleach. I don't know if that's going to come off to be honest with you. But what I have noticed over here, whilst a lot of the black came off, there is some staining from the mould or mildew, whatever it was. But you can see a little bit here but there's a big bit over here where I've basically gone along and left the water and the soap suds on there. In this area in particular, 
has started to peel the paint off and it started to bubble and like there we go it's just basically flaking away so underneath there there will be the original ball nose coping which judging from this little sample here looks very similar to these sort of mottled tiles um, so I don't really know if that is a task I want to undertake, stripping off all this paint. I have no idea because this has started coming off so easily and for some reason it's only on this side. I don't know whether whoever's painted these has used proper paint for swimming pool tiles for coping or whether they've just used some sort of emulsion it's it's quite textured it almost looks like it's got a grit in it which could be just that it's non-slip paint because you can use that kind of stuff on garage floors and of course swimming pool surrounds um, because obviously there's wet in swimming pools so you wouldn't want to slip so a lot of swimming pool paint is textured but I just don't know Some, something's telling me that just sort of normal masonry paint has been used on these um, so I'm going to leave it for a little while now just to fully dry. I have sort of tried to mop up all the wet areas with towels which you would have seen um, but I want to try and just leave it to dry out for a little bit because I've created some like flaky paint bits so I'm going to need to go around with the cordless hoover and just hoover those bits out until I figure out the next sort of stage, the next steps. Um, have discovered or well, i say discovered i knew we had a few broken tiles there's one here i think there's one down there and one here and somewhere another one in the middle so i know this is just a mini makeover ideally i would love to replace the tiles because actually when you look at the space it's just around the edge and then the biggest area of tiles is just this section here. I don't know if that's a particularly cost effective <laughs> job to do and also I don't know how easy this coping would be to remove and again something just an instinct is telling me that this coping is actually holding on the liner which is not how a pool is supposed to be made but something's just telling me that that's <laughs> that's how it is so yeah i think some decisions have to be made i'll probably go and show simon my progress he's busy doing gardening things with like a chainsaw at the moment you can probably hear him but yeah i'm relatively happy with how this has started to come up right i've had some lunch some time to reflect <laughs> because admittedly once i finished the cleaning i was quite irritated by the state or by the fact that the paint was peeling off the coping of the edge stones basically. Um, I have not come up with a solution for that because I was not intending on stripping paint off things um, but Simon has suggested that's what I do and then repaint these coping stones so that is going to be something I'm going to have to research because I need to try and find appropriate paint. Anyway for now I'm just going to crack on with the walls um, or crack on as much as possible. I have got some little green testers here. Now this isn't the right formula of paint. I'm going to be using masonry paint uh, because it is, um, I don't think waterproof is the right word, but it's suitable for getting wet where it's just normal indoor paint. Although you can scrub the intelligent matte stuff, which is actually the samples that I've got here. I just think masonry paint would be much better for painting brick. Um, so I have got three samples in this box, if I know how to open it, ta-da! And there will be no surprise to see that Joanna is one of those samples. And then I've got slacked lime, or slaked lime, however you want to pronounce it, and another colour called linen wash. Now I haven't actually used a linen wash tester, I think I have used slacked lime before though, um, and obviously Joanna. I very much know what that looks like because the majority of our house and also plant pots and other various miscellaneous objects have been painted in Joanna. Um, I have a feeling linen wash is possibly going to be the colour that we end up going for in here. So what I'm going to do is just paint a couple of swatches. Samples are quite small but I'm hoping I can do a swatch on this side 
and a swatch on that side just so that we've got different light variations to choose from. So whilst I was waiting for my little sample swatches over there to dry, you would have seen I managed to take off these two really rusty towel rails from this wall here and also the two washing lines which were hung just up there next to that rusty grate thing. There's a lot of rust in here, it seems to be a recurring theme. So yes, these are sort of starting to dry now and I don't know if they'll come across on camera as such as they are in real life, but we've got linen wash at the top followed by slacked lime or slaked lime in the middle and then Joanna at the bottom. Joanna, I have already vetoed and I know for you regulars that will come as a shock, but I think it's too it's too warm because it does have some warmth to it and because we've got this wooden ceiling which is quite orangey um, it kind of affects the light because obviously it's very reflective and I love the ceiling I love the warmth of the wood panelling but it's just making Joanna look almost a little bit pink or peach and I am not into pink or peach so it is now between linen wash and slacked lime. So what I'm actually gonna do is leave them, leave the swatches uh, until a little bit later on when the sun goes down. Cause obviously it's nice and sunny at the moment. It's nice and bright and it's casting a rather warm light. Whereas later, once the sun starts to go down a bit, it will look a bit cooler in here. So I then wanna come back and assess both of these colors when there is a slightly cooler tone of light, just so that I can get the overall vibe of lots of different light situations to make sure that we get the right color. And then I've also got the same three swatches over here on this wall, which obviously is the wall with the windows above. So this wall appears almost a little bit darker on that side because the natural light is above it rather than shining onto it like the swatches over on this side. So again, I'm gonna leave these until a little bit later on so I can come back in and reassess. I might even turn the lights on on the ceiling. Not that we would ever be in here when it's sort of dark outside, I wouldn't have thought, but I might even come and do that just so that I can see what it looks like in artificial light as well. Hello, it's been a few days since I swatched the paint. I don't think you can see it over there, but you might be able to see those ones down there. Um, I have made a decision on the paint and I have requested the paint from Little Green so I'm just waiting for that to arrive. So in the meantime, um, I've also had a little change of mind on the floor. We're going to attempt to paint the floor tiles and then if we do end up using the pool a bit more or we do feel that we really do like this room, then we'll look at replacing the pool coping and the tiles around the outside, which we'll hopefully do ourselves. So today, I've got the task of like digging out some of the old grout in the areas where it needs repair or repairing. And yes, then I'm gonna re-grout on top of that and it needs 24 hours for the new grout to dry, which is fine. The paint that we've bought for the floor, I think needs about seven to, day, seven to 10 days curing time. So ideally I'd like to paint the walls first and get all the floor grouted, which I'm gonna to do today, then paint the walls once the paint arrives, and then the floor will essentially be the last thing that I'm gonna paint, because we'll then have to leave it for like seven to 10 days. Um, so yes, that's plan of action for today. So most of the grout repairing that needs to be done is on this far side and it's in between where the pool coping stones meet the tiles and I'm not sure why it's predominantly on this side and not the other side 
but that's the dealio so that is what I'm gonna have to tackle today so as you can see there's quite a lot of gaps and I also need to scrub off some of this flaking paint over on this side on the coping stones as well but there's areas like this which the grout has kind of crumbled inside I'm gonna have to dig all that out and hoover it out before I re-grout and put the new stuff in and then if I just take you over here there's a couple of areas like this where we've got broken tile and I think there's another one over here um, and because we're painting the wall I'm hoping that I can pop grout in this crack and then once it's painted over it will be less visible that's the plan but we'll have to see Hello again. Today is going to be an exciting day. In fact, it's probably not just today because this is going to be a two day job. So today and tomorrow, we're going to see quite a big aspect of the makeover come together because ba -ba, over yonder, the paint has arrived. So the little green paint arrived this morning whilst I was filming a video. It's now five to 12 and you've got to allow certain uh, hours for drying time in between coats and I am going to be using a primer. So basically I wasn't sure what kind of paint to use in here because it's an indoor pool and it's quite a rare thing especially in this country so I asked Little Green's uh, technical advisor and they advised intelligent eggshell was the best paint to be using in here which can also be used on bathroom walls so it's really good for the humidity. But what I'm going to do today whilst I'm painting I'm going to crack open all these windows and first of all I need to apply their all surface primer because this is just completely bare brick so I think if I paint directly on top of that I'm just going to waste the paint because it's just going to suck straight into the brick so first things first I need to paint the first coat with the primer. I'm done, not quite. So this is just the all surface primer. It took me six hours yesterday, which was pretty much just this one wall and a little bit of that one. And then it's taken me four and a half hours today to finish that wall, this, this, and this. It was one of those jobs which I honestly thought was gonna take me like a day at most to fully paint the wall. Uh, to fully paint all the brick and it has taken so much longer than I anticipated obviously because it's a swimming pool and there's water in there I can't use a sprayer so it's having to be done by hand um, so I'm going to leave this to dry before doing the next few coats still got another coat of primer to do and then one coat of the intelligent eggshell it's a new day I didn't get very far yesterday, admittedly. Um, but before I start again today, I did just wanna show you guys this. This is the difference, obviously you can see how far I got yesterday. This big wall is the, 
is the real mission. Uh, but you can see the difference between the all surface primer, which is actually linen wash, so you can get the all surface primer um, tinted or coloured to the exact colour, little green colour that you've chosen. And then here, this is the intelligent eggshell. Now, one of my concerns was how am I going to be able to tell where I've already painted? when I'm painting on top of the primer. But as you can see, the intelligent eggshell is much more opaque and you can see a much more sort of true color now, especially if I zoom in. You can see how it's definitely warmer, bearing in mind that I did water down by about 20 to 30% the primer, which is what I was instructed to do um, by Little Green, just because obviously the paint would have been soaking into the brick and that sort of prevents it from doing that. So yeah, you can really see a difference there and the color is a lot more true now in the Intelligent Eggshell. So now I'm going back to my tins and I'm gonna crack on for another day. <sighs> you know when you undertake one of those jobs and you're like, Ah, uh, this is going to take me a few hours, a day, two days. Mm. This was one of those tasks which I vastly underestimated. It took four days to paint this room and I never want to paint another brick again in my life. But doesn't it look better? It definitely looks brighter, even though it wasn't particularly dark in here before, it, it really does reflect a lot more light and it just, I don't know, it kind of makes it a more pleasant room, it makes it less sort of bricky, which I just find a little bit grungy and dingy sometimes. Now, admittedly, I thought I would be able to fit the entire pool renovation mini makeover, budget makeover into one video. I've realised now that I've filmed so much footage and there's so many different elements that I'm going to have to split it into two. So this video that you are watching today is part one of this mini makeover of the pool. You guys are then going to get instalment number two in a few weeks when we finish off doing a few other DIY bits in here and then adding in all the fluff, like all the accessories and furniture, which I haven't even found yet, and all that kind of stuff. So thank you very much for tuning in to watch part one of this budget pool makeover, and I will see you in the next one.